Alright, um, hi YouTube. So I'm gonna try and see if I can figure this out and finish it in this part today or, tomorrow, or this weekend anyway. Uh, so I had a video, uh, a different one I had uploaded, but I took it down only because it was about my family, some of it too, and it was in the detail about their life more so, and it was uh, not my place to really say about that stuff to post on here. So I'm gonna make a new video right now. Um, if I remember, I guess I left off over at where we're at the motel in 2016 and all that other stuff. So basically, not long after that, I went to Walmart, worked back at Walmart again. I had a few jobs. I don't even think I really told you guys about all the jobs I've ever had, but probably had like two dozen jobs since I was like 14 years old. Anyway, um, so I went back to Walmart in 2016, worked there for like a month or two. I was an uh, unloader for the trucks and stuff, and there was, you know how there's like a million items in Walmart? And because we were at a super center, not just a regular tiny Walmart that they have some places. I worked at a super center, which has like probably, a, I don't know, 50,000 to 100,000 items. And so when I was only there as an unloader for like a month, little maybe, maybe six weeks, I don't know. can't remember, but it was around a month or so, give or maybe a little more. And they got mad because I still didn't know where way over half the stuff was. I was still learning where all the bins go and where everything goes and et cetera. And they still got mad because I already got enough with my head going on with a million things going on in my head every single day. And every, you know, second, just a whole bunch of different crap goes on in my head. With And uh, anyway, so I got stressed out. So I ended up quitting there, though. And um, not too long, it was, well, not too long after that, we ended up moving. We moved to the apartment here. And our dad and our brother went one way, and then me and my other brother, we stayed here. They had a house. They sort of did their own thing with life, and they were hanging out with the wrong crowd and stuff. We'll just say that, and we're living really wrong. That was me and our, uh, my other brother, Justice. We started drinking a lot because I was working full-time at that point at Dorado's, and I was making like 400 a week, like 350 to, to four, sometimes a little more, depending on if I work overtime or not. And, um, anyway, so literally like this was my routine every day. So I'd wake up at like three o'clock cause I had to be at work at four. I wake up at three o'clock, take my, you know, routine to get ready, brush my teeth, bathroom, everything else. Then I would, uh, sometimes I would shower sometimes before work, but sometimes after because I was working at a meat plant with, you know, chicken and all that other stuff. So. Anyways, um, I'd get up at three, sometimes shower before work, sometimes after. Sometimes I still have to shower even after, even if I shower before, but, and I'd run to the liquor store and I would go get a bottle. And me and my brother always drank a liter and then we started drinking more than just a liter and like a liter and a half pint, a liter and a pint. Before I knew it on weekends, we were drinking a liter and a fifth or two fifths every, you know, Friday or Saturday night, you know. So we would drink, so I would work, I'd get, get, I'd get at work right at 4, and then my boss would get mad because I'd always be on the floor, like at 4.05, I'd clock in at like 3.55, and I'm supposed to clock in at 3.50, so I'd always be like 5 minutes late on the floor, but I'd always be clocked in, bef like right before, like 5 minutes before 4, but he would get mad at me, and he would just start, you know, then he would just, you know, give me a hard time, but he wouldn't get like mad, like fire me or suspend me or nothing, because, you know, I was a really good worker, like I was, my line was, my job was just to pull all the meat off the line, I would make jokes, and do all kinds of stupid things. I'd have to wear a face mask because a lot of days the stuff would have seasonings on it or whatever when they took it off. And uh, I would have like some type of stuff on it that would make you sneeze. So I'd have to wear a face mask and I'd just be like this and like roll my eyes up or some stupid thing, making faces and just being stupid. And um, I always uh, got everyone's attention like half the time in the break room whenever I would talk, like people would listen or they would say, you know, laugh and just say stupid stuff about me, like, you know, jokes, whatever, because... I was a comedian, but, um, anyways, so, so, um, anyway, so I, what the routine was get up three, take a crap, shower, shave if I needed to or whatever, go to the store, run back home and then always leave at like 20 minutes to four. I'd leave for work and it always take me like 15 or so minutes to get there. And cause I had to ride the bike across town and then I would get off sometime, like we'd always get off by 12, 1230. Sometimes at one and, you know, sometimes early. Sometimes, like one time, I remember going there and I, I, I couldn't believe it. Like I went there and they were, they were like, we don't have no meat for, the, for the, the, the second shift. So first shift did all the meat and there wasn't much for them to do. And they were sent home early. So you guys are basically just 
you know, just stay for the barbecue cookout we're having, stay clocked in for 30 minutes, whatever, and then eat your food and or whatever, and then, you know, clock out and go home. I was like, yes, I get to get drunk all day, day. And, you know, so, like, how the routine would work when we would drink anyways, like, we would start drinking around 1, and then we would drink till, like, 6 in the morning and then have dinner for breakfast and go to bed by 7, and I'd get up at, like, you know, sometimes I'd go to bed at even at 8, and then I'd get up at 3 again and do it all over again. Some days I'd wake up, throw all my guts up, and then I'd get up and just have to go back to work anyway. And, um... If I didn't know it, like, too, like, I pointed it out because I was just, just too stressed out. I got to the point where I pushed my brother, and me and him were the clo- like, still the closest in the family out of all of this, but we've had our differences over the last couple of years just because of all the stress, and I think just because of just things in general, but he doesn't like to clean, I get mad, we argue, and long story short, I was working full time, so for like, for two and a half months, busting my butt, and I got so stressed out at the end that I pushed him, and then, you know, it almost got into a, you know, big old fight, and so I was like, alright, I gotta point out. So, I already had two points because I just, you know, I was, I called in, I was just like, hey, I'm sick, even though I was drunk one time, and then another time I just wanted to drink that Friday, so I called in that Friday on payday, and we went out, and it was all, no, it was stupid. If I had known those things, I would have just saved those and waited for later because I was just a couple of weeks from actually getting a white hat. And then I didn't know that the points roll over, like they not roll over, but they start over. So when you're there for three months, then after three months probation, your white hat, your, you know, your pay goes up a little and, you know, and such and such. But instead of getting paid every week, you're getting paid every other week. Which is, that's the only down part, but I guess twice the money at once, you know, but also more taxes they take out too. But anyway. So that was our routine for three, four months, I guess, really, because, you know, we still, you know, we had money here that when he, because he's on Social Security, so we had checks coming in even when I wasn't working, and when I was working, it was great, because we had whatever we wanted, whatever we wanted, and we were st- stupid, and we just blew through the money, and we shouldn't have did that, but, um, so... That was 2017, and that was, you know, when I, like, I really started going back to work in 2016, because I didn't work for a few years, and I was applying for disability, because I've been diagnosed with all kinds of things, but I could not get it, and I went through the whole process all the way to see the judge, and then being appealed after the judge, but that got denied, so I just, like, screw it, I went back to work, you know, and uh it's, it's a good decision, I feel, because... I, at the end of the day, have, a, uh, you know, a feeling of, you know, I, ma- I earned that money. I made that money. And right now I'm between work, but I'm looking for more work. But if it was up to me, I'd be in L.A. and I'd be in movies and I'm just kidding. No, but really I, I would. And I'd be taking like whatever God told me with my money. I always tied 10% or more. I was always lately. That's how this year has been. Whenever I get a check, if, you know, there's been times I tried to go to a church, but they were closed to the church. I promised to pay back and they weren't there. And I was trying to give them money. And then later on, God would have a different purpose or use for it. So I didn't just go blow it, but you know, I helped our dad out when he was on bail and he, he was going to go back to jail because he owed money. And then, you know, he owed like a hundred dollars. I was like, well, I have a hundred dollars for tithe. The church wasn't open. So God put it in my heart, all right, I'll take that and put it there. So he didn't get arrested then. But, um, so how the whole thing with the, the drinking and the Bible works out, how it did work out back then, and it's a lot better now, of course, drinking wise, like maybe like one or two days a week. And, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm a little sleepy. But, um, so how it worked out back then when we first started drinking all the time and I was working full time, like we started talking about it, I think one or two days, we were a couple of days, maybe, maybe a little longer, it might've been a week. We were like, Hey, we should start reading the Bible and we should, you know, we started talking about it. And cause Jess has read the Bible some by himself before. And I guess he said he got a little ways in, but then he just gave up on it or something. You know how the Bible is just so long. It's so, you know, like you know, I have ideas of, you know, how to actually maybe do st- stuff. And, you know, if I found the right people to invest or the right people to help, I have ideas about the Bible and how maybe to help others to be able to hear the Bible, about, about the Bible because it's so long and, you know, there's different things I need to talk to the right people about. And I haven't done that, so that's, I got to get into. But, um, anyway, so, uh, we started doing that for like a few days or a week, and then before we knew it, we started bringing the Bible out when we were drinking. But then we weren't remembering, I wasn't remembering much of what we read. And we were only reading like two chapters or something, two or three, and just 
however we felt at the time. So two or three is good. Okay. And then, you know, and at the time it was the start. I didn't know that. And so next thing I know though, we go from reading like two or three while we're drinking, we go to reading, you know, like two or three or whatever before we drink every day. And then we go from that, like it doesn't even take, but maybe a couple of weeks. I mean, it could have took a month or so maybe, but then after that, we're reading like five chapters a day, five chapters every day before we drink. And we drink like five to seven days a week almost. I mean, at the time it was five days a week, minimum, sometimes it's every day. And um anyway, so yeah, we went through it and like one year we got through the first time. And now this time it's been another year since, and we're like halfway through this time only because the last year we weren't drinking as much as we used to so a year ago like two years ago we drank a lot and then this last year we've cut back a lot and it was you know it went from five to seven days a week to three to five days a week now for me it's a couple of days a week you know on a really bad week i mean if there is any money it might be three times but like like I drank, uh, we drank twice, I think, in the last week. And right now we're broke and we're looking for work for for bills and stuff. So, I mean, so it's like we don't have room for to drink. So I'm, you know, I'm kind of happy with that. I mean, like there's, you know, I want to start the new year with the fasting and uh, and stuff. And I don't want to get in, like, you know, say too much about that. But so I'm looking forward to that next year as well. But, um, anyway, so that was 2017 and then 2018, sort of the same, like I said, the last couple of years, that's, and, and it's been a couple of years or longer. It's like, as soon as we started reading the Bible, I gave up the, the whole the prostitution thing right away. And then it took me time. It took me to let go about like sex in general, like, you know, it took like about a year to just let everything go that wise. And, and then I like had a, a moment of relapse a couple weeks ago, one time in, in over a year's time. And so what normally what used to break me down, make me so shameful, used to tear me inside and make me angry, make me hate myself, hate others, hate life was those things. But this last time when I did that, like I, I felt shame for like a day or so, but then it went away. Only because, like, I remember reading the story of David and what, like, like what separated him from a lot of others that were out there and that purposely had their best friends killed or killed people or killed their family or killed others or go out there and live those lifestyles because David had his best friend murdered. So he was a murderer. You can't deny that. I mean, he, he was an adulterer and a murderer. But what separated him from, like, all those other people was his faithfulness to God. So he thought he could hide that. I don't know why, because especially when you know God to a, a deep meaning, a deeper meaning than you should know, you can't hide nothing from him. He sees everything. And so what, what made me happy about that was that, that I remember his, you know, his never ending love for God and trust that God's love for him is the same as, and it's even stronger than anyone could ever feel towards another human being or towards God himself, how you feel about God. If you're deeply, you know, in love, you know, like not in love, like marriage way, but well, I mean, that's what God wants is for us to put him first and everything. So not just put him above everything like, for, like, okay, so God's first, you know, and then you have other, you know, sections, oh, then family, friends and job like that. God wants to be first in everything in your life. So when you wake up, thank God before you go to bed, thank God. Before you eat, thank God. Before you leave, you know, just put God in everything in your life. Make Him your, you know, like sacrifice who you are and throw away, throw away the things that you know that aren't from God. So, okay, like maybe cigarettes. And I know my brothers, they have to work on that. I smoke a couple of cigarettes if I drink too. Sometimes I'll drink, drink, okay, I drink more than I should when I drink. I'll drink like five drinks. And then when I do, though, I'll smoke sometimes two cigarettes, sometimes like five cigarettes. It just depends on, because we'll, I'll make, you know, me and my brother will drink a liter and we'll make it last us like eight hours because we'll drink from 8 p.m., like I said, to like 6 a.m. So that's what, 10 hours or whatever. So, I mean, we'll just, you know, we're not trying to get super wasted. But anyways, at the end of it all, so I know that I have to learn to let that go 
And I know it's a repetitive sin that I'm dealing with and I am not going to give up fighting, letting it, you know, like I'm not going to give up fighting, putting trust in God that one day I can be sober for good, maybe from drinking period. Or if anything, maybe instead of drinking so much, just have one or two, you know, drinks. But, um, anyways, so that pretty much does sum up a lot. I mean, cause all the other, like there's other significant stories to talk about actually. So I'll make another video about that later, but this is actually a little bit long right now for a video. So I'll try to make another video tomorrow after, you know, I, I got work tomorrow in the morning. So I'll try to make a video tomorrow afternoon or evening or whatever and upload another one and try to finalize like all the other stories the last couple of years or whatever of our life. And then after that, I'll just maybe start like some type of different, you know, whatever, like videos or something or just, I don't know, like keep updates and stuff too. But have a blessed week. God loves you all. And don't forget to, you know, tell your family, tell everyone else out there, strangers, that God loves them too. Take care.